dealing with ransomware for a long time now. We've had earliest ransomware back in the 80s and then really a big rise of this kind of ransomware in 2013. Why do you guys think this is still such a big problem for organizations? Honestly, from the adversary side, it's still just extremely profitable. I mean, if it still works and they're making tons of money and today's Bitcoin value is what, $2,500 per Bitcoin? Why wouldn't I continue doing it? People are continuously paying me, then I'm going to keep doing that. And I'll, I'll, I'll go from, from what Brian said. Not only does it remain a problem, I think it's an increasing problem. I think we're seeing a, a different, uh, a, a very, very broad spectrum of actors. We see we have on the one hand people like Lockie, and the interesting thing was Lockie, as Lockie was in our paper, Lockie you know, remains you know, a, a very large threat. It's a very uh, expert driven ransom with a, a, a small act or group of actors. Uh, on the other, on the other uh, side of it, then you have something like server, which is ransomware as a service enables an entirely different kind of actor. It enables people who have no sophistication, no technological ability, yet they can now become you know, ransomware actors. Well, that's the funniest part too, right? The barrier to entry into this whole ransomware industry, and it really is an industry, is so incredibly low now. Any person out there, and a lot of these adversaries are likely to be in developing nations where maybe they don't make a lot of money, so they launch a ransomware campaign for a week or two and they make ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. That's pretty good for them. Yep. And they're making it uh, you know, with Bitcoin. It's, you know, it's anonymous for them. It's very easy for them to, you know, to monetize. And similarly, then they've got uh, infrastructure using uh, the Onion router. So they have also a robust and uh, more or less impossible to trace infrastructure as well. And it gets even more kind of amusing when we start seeing some of these adversaries now not even using ransomware, but merely the threat of ransomware, starting to send these ransom notes saying there's the classic, we're going to DDoS you unless you pay us X amount of Bitcoin. But now we also have them kind of a little more advanced where they're now holding databases and things like that for mm -hmm. ransom, where you, know, you just have publicly accessible databases due to poor policy, and these guys just take it down leave a little note saying, if you want your data, database back, pay us X amount. Yeah, I'd say that's actually one of the more shocking things last year was the sheer number of databases that had been set up with no authentication, open to the world, and widespread scanning started identifying these, and it was very easy for attackers to start just accessing them, encrypting some of the data, and leaving a note to say, if you want your files back, you're going to have to pay. Yeah, like the attacks with all the Mongo backends that really affected quite a few people and a lot of developers like to use that. Yeah. So and that's a good a note for target. anyone who's moving things to the cloud. You might be very used to setting up databases inside your data center and you're not too concerned about how they're authenticated and how they're controlled. But if you set up one of these new NoSQL databases out on some cloud system and you don't take those extra precautions, you might leave it completely exposed to the world, vulnerable to ransomware or just simple data theft. 